Much appreciated. And I want to go to Chris Voss. He's a hostage negotiator, former member of the FBI. Chris, uh, you, you just heard Victor's reporting there. Day four of this crisis. It's a really cold night. They're in an underground bunker with a five-year-old little boy. Um, what does this tell you about how the talks are going, that we're in day four? Well, at, at this point, I mean, they, they've taken it to a stage where they're probably feeling that they're at a, a bit of an impasse. I mean, they've given him an opportunity to talk. They've got a pretty good idea of what's on his mind. Um, they're struggling now for the threads that they're going to be looking for that'll be the keys to, to getting, out, getting him out of this. So they've learned a lot about him, and um, they realize now that patience is still the key. They're really sort of searching, sifting through what he said to find out what the, uh, what the thread's going to be that's going to unravel this. And as time goes by, what, from your experience, what are the chances that this story has a happy ending? Well, the chances that it'll have a happy ending are still very good. Um, the, I've, uh, from what I can tell, I mean, I've been talking to people that are close to the scene. Um, the threat level is not increasing. It's, uh, it's stable, and it's been stable for several days, as near as I can tell from, from what they're saying to me. And, and that's a good sign. That actually gives them some more options in terms of communication to try to find a way to get him thinking in a, in a positive way so that he sees that there's another way out of this. Uh, because they're really, physically, they're, they're, there is no way to get into this site. So they're going to have to talk mm -hmm. him out, and the chances are very good that they will be able to. And, and I know you've been watching this story closely since the very beginning in terms of the, the, the way it happened, that he went on this bus, that he killed the bus driver point blank, and he grabbed a five-year-old boy. Why this boy? Why not another child? Do you think that this is a purposeful selection of this child, that he'd been watching this child, or is it random? Well, the indicators are that uh, the actual selection of the child was random. Um, there's a pretty good chance that he'd been eyeing the bus and, and that the turning around in the driveway was something that had been building up inside of him. There, there's some other apparent triggers here, the possibility that he had a court date that he had, had to face, and these things sort of weighed on him. But as far as the actual child goes, that looks like it was, it was random, which it, it bodes well overall for the safety of the child because that means that the child himself is not the target of, of his anger or his rage. Wow. Um, and, and, and in terms of the things that the negotiators are asking uh, Dykes, I'm always so curious how these conversations happen. When you say they're trying to get him to think positively and do something to release the boy, um, it, first of all, he could be mentally disturbed, but he also is well aware, if not, that when he comes out, he's going to be in serious trouble. So how do you convince someone like that that this is the right thing to do? Well, um, it's more uh, how things line up with what he sees is necessary for his message as opposed to what we would perceive to be the right thing to do. He wouldn't have taken all these defensive measures if he didn't want to live. Um, if he didn't want to live, he would have come out and got into a gunfight with law enforcement. So while as long as he wants to live and if he has a message to get out, they right. s need to try to connect those two things up to get him to come out. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate your time.